wonder if this was gonna pick up. I hope this picks up the sound. If not, ADR. Right. Hi guys, welcome to my channel, and welcome back to my channel. We are here at the iconic war bar here in Richmond, and I'm here with Nadia White. Hello. But we're gonna be doing a book bunk for you guys today, just talking, eating. We got lots of good food. I got the, uh, what the fuck? Bacon Hushner. Bacon I was like, what the fuck is this called? It's extra, extra bacon. Oh, it's got, you're right. It's got fries and stuff, and it's the only time I eat pork is bacon. And I got a chicken and waffles sandwich. <laughs> that is, I thought you just got waffles, and now I'm like, no. oh, it's a sandwich, and, bitch. And it's got hot sauce and bacon and cheese. That's, that's a mood right there. That's a whole aesthetic. That's everything. Right? And sweet potato fries. Fries. I love fries. I love pickles. I'm like, let me take this off before it makes the bun soggy. <laughs> We're here to talk about you, what you do, your job, all that fun stuff. Gosh, we have enough time. Right. So let's start with why you're here in Richmond to start with. Okay. So I have been a uh, veteran of the adult and fetish industry for over 10 years now. I'm here to feed your dance and post at a local club. Because um, it's NASCAR weekend and I'm an already a black trash. And we're here in the South. Yes. yes. In the South, we uh, watch cars run around in circles for six hours. Is it really that long? Yes. I've, I can honestly say I've never watched a NASCAR race. Oh my god. It, you, you go, you pack into a stadium, people are falling down the bleachers, that's the best part. Um, Cause tailgating. Yep. Yeah. I love it. But in here in uh, RIR, it's a very simple oval track. So there's very rarely ever any crashes. That's my favorite part. But there's barely, barely any. So it's just great racing. Uh, usually, just what happens is someone loses a tire, and yeah, and so you end up with hours of. Um, the, the like the caution car coming out and leading everyone around for like at like a whole 10 miles per hour so oh it takes God. like six hours to get through a race here because there are so many caution moments how many miles is it um i have no clue i think it's laps it's on my laps because it's so small I think they do like um, 500 laps. Oh, she's got these ones. Yeah, and the track itself is like um, a mile or like a mile and a half, something like that, two miles, something like that. The Richmond 500! Pretty much. Uh, the Daytona 500 is much more interesting, but the Richmond one, it's done by laps, I believe. If I remember correctly, it's been like a decade since I went, but. I don't lie, you were just there. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? I get in drag and go to the races. Wave the flags around. Yes! <laughs> One titty goes flying across the, the, the bleachers, <laughs> hits somebody in the head. Like, can I have that back? So, I shot with a crossdresser one time, and she left her titties at the shoot, so I took them home. Love that. And my grandmother saw them, and she picked them up. She's like, you already have fake ones. What are you doing with these? You don't need any more. You do need more. Always need more. Always extra titties. You can always have more titties. Like a dog going down your stomach. Yeah. Do a whole, do a whole like cow moment and just like have four. <laughs> It'd be great. Now that would be that'd be that like there's like weird niche porn like that. I'm sure there's there's a niche for everything. Exactly. I'm sure like people would be totally into like or like you know, get put like a third one in between. There's there's, there's a girl who has that done. See, that's why. Like she wouldn't like had it done. She wasn't born that way. No, she had it put in. That's wild. That's we easy. got a little um, creativity going on over here. Oh, yes. All the food, yeah. Look at that food. Ah! And speaking of food, I do porn, obviously. And I have a competitive eater. Oh, yeah. If you guys have not seen her YouTube channel, she can eat 
a ton of food in like 10 minutes. I've never seen anyone eat that much food that quickly. The last um, thing, I just went on a food tour in the middle of California with my friend. We did 30 inch bacon wrap burritos that were like 6 or 7 pounds and I ate it in 7 minutes and 40 seconds. What the fuck? Because you did one where you were like trying to beat another guy's time. And this guy was like, I think like, I remember like, I think you showed the picture of him. He's like twice your size, and you like have his time. And I was like, what? You're like so tiny. I don't know. Where does it go? Like, the journey's out that one. Yeah, I haven't figured it out because you ate like two pizzas and two sandwiches in like 17 minutes in one of your videos. That was like, that was the first one I ever watched. That's why I remember it so clearly. And then like, your stomach looked the exact same afterwards. I was like, but where? in here. And that's, that's where the titties are. It's actually just extra stomachs that you had installed. It's like a camel. Yeah, like instead of having like implants, you just had like two extra stomachs put in. Yes. That's secrets. We're learning. That's how you be a competitive eater. Um, I also have a podcast. After Dark with Nadia Light and Sergeant Kabuki Man in my baby. And we are adult horror, weird stuff, all things debaucherous podcast. Okay. okay. That's good. That's good. We love a good podcast. Talking about that. Yeah, you tagged me on something today about a podcast. I did, I did. Um, what is that person's name? It is a, they're a non binary trans YouTuber that I follow. I follow a lot of this. I'm trying to remember their name. I will, I'll, I'll put like a, like letters, I'll have to go and look it up because I can't remember off the top of my head, like which specific one it was, but they were looking for, um, LGBT podcasts, and I was like, this is an LGBT podcaster. So you identify as non-binary, non -binary. got it. I'm just an alien. Love that. Love that. As a fire mask, cat. Cute. Love that. Thanks, cat. Hello. We're having a good time with that. Um. So, are you comfortable talking about like plastic surgery? Oh yeah. No. Okay. I'm I'm extremely open about my plastic. Surgery. Okay. So you've had plastic surgery before. Oh yeah. So while I love have you had, I love you had plastic surgery. Who doesn't? <laughs> right. I like plastic surgery with makeup, so like because I change my face features way too much. Right. Yeah. You don't have one thing that. You yeah, I can't pick one thing. So I have to use makeup to do it because like if I ever got plastic surgery, I would want to change it in like a week. It's not even healed up. Yeah. Like why can't you just move this over just a little bit? Right, then hit bands I'm like, that is so nice. Two days later. So can you just like move this over just like <laughs> Um I'd be under the knife constantly. You know, <laughs> if there was endless supplies of money and time. <laughs> Um, I have had a breast lift, a breast augmentation, scar revision, cosmetic dentistry, a skin only tummy tuck, liposuction, um, fat grafting. I did not wake up like, well I woke up like this, but not like this. I think from the neck down. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I've only had, my, I had to have my whole chest reconstructed, so. I, that's the only plastic surgery I've ever had. And it's because my sternum like went the wrong direction. Uh, like sternum's curve curved outward, mine curved inward, and it was not cute. So I have I have plastic surgery there, and that's it. Um, but because of where the location of the scars, a lot of people think I'm a trans man. Uh, that's where that comes from. Yeah, because I have right here. So a lot of people see that and they think that I'm a trans man. I was like, nope, that's I didn't have, I didn't have a, One little thing over here yeah. versus the whole pectoral. Right, I'm like, I'm like, usually they extend all the way here. I have yeah. seen like really small ones before though. So like super, super expensive, like like the Beverly Hills, very expensive surgeons, they can do it where the, where the scars aren't that small. But mine are off to the side here. They're not, they're not even over here. Yeah. But it's like a whole conspiracy theory because you don't have my documentary. There's a whole, there's a series of conspiracy theories about me and my, and my wife. Yes. You have a vagina. Yes. Like, 
<laughs> hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Conspiracy Theory. Um, no, that's how it is. Like, there's a theory that I'm a trans man. There's a theory that I'm secretly a trans woman. Uh, somebody suggested that Megan is a like crisis actor. This is all fake. That the entire marriage is fake. That we're not actually married. We have a marriage license. We are in fact legally married. There's pictures of the wedding online. Somebody thought that we created an entire fake wedding and like put it up online. I'm like, I'm was gonna that before or after that you did all those online interviews? And stuff? After. After. Because what was that? What was that for? That's all the one that was circulated on Facebook. It was just nice. Like, this um, Brock Ross baby just thought I was an interesting person. That I'm an asexual, agender, male born person who does drag and is married to a sister. Yeah. And they were like, wow, that's interesting. And then, like, my drag is, like, very unique on top of that. It's not very traditional. Not at all. You just do your own thing, which I appreciate so much. I do. What, when I wake up and I'm getting ready for a show, I do whatever I'm feeling in the moment. And that's how it works. So, tell me about what it's like to be a porn star. What is average, like, what is your work day like? doing porn because I feel like everyone thinks that porn is like this like you go in it's like 30 minutes and you're done that's what everybody thinks it is and I know that's not what it is no right I, I, I love bursting people's porn bubbles Good but yeah. porn is not it, it is work just like any kind of video production you know but you have to you know, have the mindset that you're going to interact with someone on a very physically close level, but yeah, I mean, there's still getting ready, there's makeup, there's setting up the scenes, there's doing the stills, but there's a storyline, going through that, doing everything. You know, sometimes physically, parts don't want to work, so sometimes a day can drag out three months. The lights, you have to turn on air conditioning and the lights. Oh. Sometimes you're not exactly thrilled about your co star, but it's still a job. Um, there's like 50 million cameras all over, so you can't really just get into the moment. You have to be worried about angles, and how things look, and what you're doing, and how, how you're appearing. Like, it's 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 not as glamorous as you think it is, and it's definitely not as fun. No, and especially the way the industry is now. The money's not as good as it used to be. There's such an influx of... Saturation of it. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And, uh, I mean, but I would still rather do that, work for myself, do something I'm passionate about, than sit and be as all the I feel that. So you mentioned the still thing, I have a question. So like, when you're filming a scene and they're about to shoot a still, do you guys have to like stop and like hold? Yeah. Like mid like, right. oh my gosh, like how long does that take? As long as you get the shot. Do they ever like ask you to like go back and like, like, like reverse like where you were and like go back to like a different position and be like, okay, we just want to like do that yeah, again? Yeah, but it's just like a regular photo shoot. Uh -huh. Like, I, we need this shot. We have to get this one. So, do it. So, like, do you guys, like, run through and then, like, they review the footage and are like, okay, well, this one didn't look as good as we thought. Can we do this scene again? Yeah. Okay. So, like, once you get through it, you're, like, through it. Yeah, because, I mean, after the pop shot, you can't really reverse that bad. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I can imagine that that wouldn't, uh... It doesn't like, go back in. Yeah. <laughs> like, it up like a hooper. <laughs> so what does happen if you messed up the shot? Like, the money shot? It's fucked up. Then you have to go back and make it with, like, pina colada mix or 
Oh, yeah. Pina colada makes it really, that's like really like a thing. I never knew that. I, mean, I don't know anything about corn, so I don't... I know like zero about corn. My imagination is much better. Oh, okay, yeah, that's enough. I am a big fan of a specific genre of corn. Corn bloopers. Oh, God. I stand a corn blooper. I think they're hilarious. Like, like you fucked. I don't know about other than that. What? You you fucked just a website that's all corn bloopers. Oh my god! I love corn bloopers. Come on. Sometimes I just like I just like Google search corn bloopers and just like find videos and stuff. I think they're so funny. I like watching ones of people I know. I've never seen one with somebody I know. But I would probably like get a good laugh out of it. I remember I watched an entire compilation of corn bloopers where people were being like fucked through balconies and stuff. I was like, you didn't check the balcony where you leaned on. And then another one that was a compilation entirely of animals walking to the set. It happens all the time in my house. I'm just like, this is great. Whenever I film anything in the house, we have to corral all the animals in different rooms. Because if you put them all together, they'll fight. But yeah. so, like, designated ones go together in different rooms. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, no, I had a, I, there was like, one that sticked out my mind, if there was like, a scene shooting and the dog just comes up in like, some of the best right next to him. Oh no. I just like, why are you just there? Just licking him. No! But I have a lot of friends who do porn. Like. Most you know. Um, I of course know, you don't like him, I hate danger. I'm not that I don't like him, but he's that interactive history. And then I also have like a person, like a really good personal friend. Um, his name is Lucas Leon. He does gay porn. Uh, I do love gay porn. And so it's like being an entertainer. And like if you get into like an entertainment business at all, you're going to like have a lot of people in your life who are like strippers and porn stars right. or go-go dancers. There's a lot to like stripping and porn industry, and it's just things I don't understand. I've never, I've tried so hard to understand, like, strip clubs. Like, I get porn, porn makes sense to me, because it's like, it's like, like this, like, it's a sexual visual stimuli, which makes, like, a lot of sense. I don't get stripping. <laughs> I was a dancer for many, 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 many years in my life. Um, you know, a lot of times I would feel like a therapist, because uh -huh. I think, Alright, as a non-binary person, I see things from all different angles. Unfortunately, in our society, it's not okay for men to talk about their feelings. Okay. A lot of men will be embarrassed or too prideful to go to a traditional therapist, but I can't even count how many times I've been pilled like a baby, literally, and like some guy is like sobbing on me about his life. You know? And it is, and that's the toss, dare I say, toxic masculinity of America. Okay, very men much. can't talk about their feelings, so they will go, like, a lot of times they feel like they can talk to girls at a strip club because we, we're there to talk to you. Like, it's not like going out, yeah. like, meeting someone where you have to force them to talk to you. We're literally here and available. And to interact. Yes. Okay. And All right, that makes sense. I get that. I think, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys don't know how to talk to women. A lot of guys are lonely, and that's just the easy way. Um, to get around it. Yeah, but then you know, like, got, like some it's just like entertainment too, where like guys that don't want to cheat on their wives or partners, but like want some like a little extra thrill or something. Okay. I don't know. When I go into a strip club, I'm like a 15 year old boy. Um, fucking terrible. I'm like, I don't know. Girls everywhere. Oh my god. Fucking hideous. I don't know what I'm gonna do later. So, you know the last time, what I, what I was doing last time I was in a strip club? Uh, I was wearing Batman fuzzy pajamas. 
drinking and drinking beer, talking shit about about people. That's what I was doing. It's Gigi. I actually have a Gigi Allen tribute band as well. I was Double D Allen. We were the Market Street Sluts. We hate everyone. Love that. I get naked and vomit on the ground and roll around it. That's cute. That's a whole like um, Dracula moment right there. <laughs> Make a happy place. Yeah, make a happy place. It is a happy place. I love a happy face. <laughs> Alright you guys, this is all we have time for. Uh, if you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Make sure you head on over to Twitter, Instagram, and check out her YouTube channel and follow her on Twitter and Instagram. Links will be in the description down below. Like and subscribe, or else. I'll suck your dick! Alright, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!